Good day and welcome to this presentation, which is all about the journey that many organizations are currently making to transform their IT function. Introducing new ways of working, such as agile development, continuous delivery and DevOps. However, many organizations are not very successful in this transformation. And that is because they lack a key ingredient, or better stated, they miss the recipe to create a modern IT operating model. This presentation is about that recipe, to create a digital management capability. My name is Rob Akershoek, working at Frisian Partners and co-chair of the IT for IT forum within the Open Group. Now, let's have a look at the agenda of this presentation. First, I will discuss how the IT operating model is evolving. Then we have a look at the capabilities you need to manage this new digital ecosystem. What are the key building blocks of a modern IT operating model? And how does IT for IT fits in that? Next, I will reveal the most important secret to make your transformation successful. It is the ingredient so fundamental to success. However, many organizations have failed to recognize this. And then the last topic is, how can you execute this journey of modernizing your IT operating model? But let me start by setting the scene. First, I would like to place the current transformation journey into the context of what is actually happening within the IT management domain. So let us have a look at how the operating model is evolving over time. First, we see that the development model is changing from a traditional project-based approach to agile development to DevOps, where the DevOps teams become responsible for both development and operations, as well as assuring security is embedded in that way of working. You build it, you run it. The team becomes responsible for the full life cycle of a digital product. We see the release model that is changing from yearly or quarter releases into month releases into continuous delivery. We can release any time if it's about new functionality or features or resolving a, an issue. The practice model is changing from traditional process-driven practices such as ITIL to more practice-driven, having the right practice at hand, to value stream approach, where we optimize an entire value stream instead of the different processes and practices within that. We look at our hosting model that is changing from physical hosted to virtual machines to hosting in the cloud and using containers. Our architecture model has been changing from large monolithic applications into tier-based application with a front end and a back end to more platform-based microservices component-based application architecture that are more flexible to modify and change. Our sourcing model has changed from traditional in-house to traditional outsourcing models, where we have different hosting vendors with large and inflexible contracts for many years, such as for network, data center, and user computing. And then we move into become a service broker, where you can easily engage with different parties when needed because based on their skills and competences and services they provide. So a simple off and onboarding of services and vendors in the ecosystem. Our support model has changed from additional tier based support to directly engage with the right persons to resolve an issue to full self-service and self-help enabled by AI and chatbots. Our organizational model has changed from a hierarchical organization to a product line organization to a more cooperative team-based autonomous teams working and swarming together to resolve the issue. As you can see as this whole picture, the operating model is changing is significant. And the big challenge is that everything is hybrid. So all these models will be working together in, in, at the same time. In addition to this evolving IT operating model landscape, there's something else happening. We need to manage much more, more and more, more components. Think about internet of things and cloud, more vendors more business demand, more changes due to continuous delivery, more security events and threats, more regulations such as GDPR, and many, many more. And that's a key challenge out there, and it will not change. Even if we rationalize our application portfolio, we still need to manage more and more. Now, the next topic I would like to go through is understanding the complexity of a digital management pipeline. 
to manage our full portfolio of services and products out there throughout its entire life cycle requires a lot of capabilities, processes, tools, and data. And we need to understand that this is pretty complex. There are so many different practices out there that you can use and tools and integrations. Just to think about this picture very high level. We have portfolio backlogs, we have architecture tools, our development or testing or source code, pipeline, test uh, monitoring tools, uh, log analytics, the IT service management system, the CNB, our self-service portal, collaboration tools that we're going to use and reporting. And all these capabilities is what you need. It, it is needed to manage the full life cycle of our digital products. But the challenge is that these have never been designed upfront. Instead, we have different teams and vendors doing their own thing with their own ways of working, their own tools and their own integrations. And as a result, we have a very complex IT management ecosystem. Just summarizing how we run IT today, you can see on the left side, we've got a lot of fragmented processes and practices, data and tools, and each team does their own thing with their own tools or their own way of working and we lack a consistent end-to-end -end flow of work. Instead, we have a lot of fragmented initiatives to improve all these capabilities on the left side, resulting in a more, more fragmented environment. What we need to realize, we need to move to the, to the digital side, decluttering our IT organization, streamlining our activities across the entire value chain, focus on the data flows and analytics, automate and digitize IT workflows, creating end-to-end -end automation. The biggest gaps out there today is the lack of an IT management vision and architecture. Although that most organizations, probably your own as well, is working on a transformation journey with many different initiatives to improve IT management. But what they still lack is a management blueprint and architecture of how everything should be connected. And what happens if you don't have a blueprint? You know, the end-to-end -end picture falls apart, it breaks down, or it cannot be very well connected. If we want to move fast, we all in IT need to be on the same page. This means sharing a common vision of our entire IT delivery chain. So what we need is to create this digital backbone or this architecture, a coherent set of standard integrated systems and processes and data to manage this new digital ecosystem providing a more streamlined and integrated DevOps capability to enable the DevOps teams. And the good news is that most of the ingredients you probably have in place, but it's now how to connect the dots and fill in the gaps. So now we're going to have a look at how to design your future digital operating model using it for it as a blueprint. Defining a new operating model requires you to do a lot of things at the same time. One way, you reinvent the way you work, think about Agile, DevOps, organize around value streams, secure by design, but also modernizing your IT management tools and platforms, automate end-to-end -end workflows, become data-driven, and become a broker and integrate services with many different vendors, and reorganize your teams and people having the right skills and competence in place. And to build this new digital operating model, you combine different practices, DevOps, ITIL and it for it And the nice thing about it for it is that it can blend these practices together. So it for it gives you the overall framework with the capabilities you need and the data flows, and then you apply different practices such as DevOps and ITIL to this. Here you see a high-level picture of the it for it standard. I would not go into much detail for this picture, but what is key is here that it for it covers the full life cycle of a product or service, from idea to production. And that's organized around a number of value streams, as you can see here. And it defines the capabilities and building blocks you need to be successful. And the focus is also on about how can we provide the right set of information and connect the different dots together to build an integrated IT management blueprint. So let me briefly introduce the IT value network that we talk about within IT for IT. So we manage the full spectrum from idea to production. So managing the full life cycle of digital products. And there are a number of key value streams to consider. Strategy to portfolio, managing the entire portfolio of services in your ecosystem, managing the strategy and the strategic direction, 
uh, managing the enterprise architecture and maintaining the application portfolio. So here we manage the full life cycle of all the products, evaluate where to invest in, what to change, adding, removing products from the portfolio and aligning that to business themes. The second value stream is about requirement to deploy, is actually maintaining the products in a backlog, development, testing, deployment. Here you see the product teams organized around continuous delivery and the pipeline to continuously evolve the product and make, maintain the security and compliance. The request to fulfill is all about repetitive change, having a standard catalog where every users and business stakeholders and IT can request services from, automatically deploy them, monitor the user's consumption, do the showback, manage identities and access. And then the last value stream about detect to correct. It's about continuous operations, monitor the services, proactively act upon events and restore service operations to ensure optimal customer uh, experience. Now, looking at the entire IT value chain, um, here is just a high level illustration of that. So we have the strategy portfolio, looking at the bigger demands and continuously evaluate and assess the portfolio. Then we move into continuous integration, continuous delivery, where we organize around the product and product teams where we continue delivery and continuous operations and monitor and take actions. But you also see this IT for IT covers a number of supporting capabilities such as manage the IT financials, security and contract management, the idea is that we can optimize the DevOps journeys into end-to-end -end value streams. For example, it could be some a value stream like somebody has an idea, a new demand, and it needs to develop, develop, test, it, deploy it, and get into production to generate value. And this whole sequence of activities needs to be optimized. It could be around resolving an incident, so something is detected and needs to be resolved. To resolve something, we might need to automatically redeploy or adding capacity. So this value stream interacts with other activities to resolve the incident or a problem fix. If we see an issue in production, we need to fix it. It needs to move back to the development backlog where the agile teams can fix it and continuously deploy that again to fix the problem. Or there's continuous new features and requirements coming in. So we optimize the existing product and we generate new value there or we have a request that somebody requests access to an application or want to request new infrastructure resources. So the challenge would be to optimize all these different journeys in a more integrated way. So we talked about optimizing the end-to-end -end value streams, but now I will reveal the most important secret to manage this new digital ecosystem. What is the most important essential ingredient or maybe even a recipe to make your IT organization successful? And that is transparency and traceability. Transparency is the new superpower. It's enabling the flow and insight to continue to improve. And that's easier than said, but transparency is not something you get as an afterthought. You need to design it into your process and practices to get this right. And that's why it's so important to get transparency as the most important capability you need to implement. So what are we talking about when we talk about transparency? Transparency can be that superpower in your IT organization. If you are able to connect all the dots together, how data flows to the entire organization or how work is organized in your organization from a demand into a portfolio, the backlog, the development, the testing, the monitoring an incident and a change and a defect, how everything fits together. And as you can see in this picture, transparency is about traceability of what's going on in the IT organization make things clear and open for everyone. And that's underpinned by the service and product backbone as you see in this picture. And the service and product backbone is another key ingredient to become successful. It's understanding the products and services you deliver to your business and how it generates value. So what you need to set up to be successful is your service product backbone. It's the digital backbone of your IT organization. And this basically consists of what products and services do I deliver to my business? How does it enable my business? So understanding the business model, understand the teams that are working on these products, understand the offerings and how end users and business can consume these services, as well as how are they deployed? So the configuration side of things, how are, is everything connected? Without this solid backbone, you won't be successful. You won't be able to drive your backlogs, your teams, your costs, your risk, compliance, and value you generate for your business. 
So let me explain a little bit more in detail how you can get transparency traceability. And just a reminder, transparency traceability is not something you will get automatically. If you don't build and design it upfront, you will not get it. And that's why most transformations fail because they don't design this end-to-end -end traceability as a way of implementing the practices. So let's explore that a bit, how that should work. First of all, every digital journey starts with what are my digital products? So it starts with the portfolio of all the products and associated teams. Many organizations don't have that. A clear inventory of products and teams. You need to understand where are those products and teams maintained? In which backlog is it in Jira or Azure DevOps? And how are the backlog items linked to the backlog? So this is needed for traceability from the product but also the enterprise architecture capabilities. You link a product to your design in the enterprise architecture system, such as uh, a biz design or Sparks. Here you manage the value streams, the capabilities and application components and understand how a digital product generate value. So we need to understand which contracts are associated with the products, typically maintained in the contract management system, such as Ariba, for example. And then we move into the source code and build that are connected to the of divine service and application deployments. And here you see that every product has a number of instances deployed. You need to automatically create these instances in the C and the B so that you know what application or service is running where. And then you have the pipeline. So what's essential in the model is that a pipeline is an automated build, test and deployment workflow that deploys changes to the different environments. And this pipeline needs to be connected to the backlog, as you see here, to the build package, but also to the CMDB to know what is being deployed, where and when. And it also creates automatically a change in the change management system if something is deployed. So there's the connectivity of what is deployed, when, and we have full traceability. During deployment, numerous deployment systems are, are uh, initiated to deploy uh, components and services. And that also links into the CNB, understanding all the components that have been deployed and which versions are running. And then we have test management integration, for example, understand the traceability of has been everything been tested and what is the test. And then we move into the monitoring space where we see events coming in through monitoring into an incident that can be assigned to the right team and maybe automatically remediate and potentially a problem that is a, needs to be have a permanent fix in the backlog and have a feedback loop. So looking at the entrant picture is to get entrant traceability, you have to connect the different systems and, and processes and data together. And this is a very difficult and challenging uh, exercise because every team has different tools, have different practices and they lack the right naming conventions. So to get transparency done, you need to align with all the teams with this way of working. But the outcome is this superpower. Now, how to build this next generation digital management platform that enables the teams to deliver faster, better and more secure at lower cost. The IT management domain is pretty complex. It's a real jungle out there with many vendors and components. And this landscape is continuously evolving with new automation opportunities. And probably you got a lot of these tools and practices already in your own organization. The real challenge is that all these products come with a way of working and come with their own data model. So where to start? If you want an integrated management capability, it's essential to start with the capabilities and the building blocks you need to create this end-to-end -end flow of work. And that's where you can use IT for IT because it identifies these essential building blocks, the data flows and the required integrations between them. The next part is based on this reference architecture, you look at your current state because most organizations don't have a good uh, understanding of how they operate IT today. Understand the tools, the processes and practice and data today, and then co-create with the different stakeholders, the target state, a high level picture of how everything should be working in the future, and then create a high level roadmap to get there. 
And then of course, in this journey, it's an iterative journey, continuously update and modify and tune your target state. Now, let us give an example of how you can approach this kind of transformation. This shows you an IT for IT workbench, where you define your strategies and objectives and look at everything, how everything is connected. So it starts with identifying the IT for IT capabilities, as you can see here, organized around different value streams. The next thing is about understanding how your current tooling landscape is supporting these capabilities, having a good understanding of all the practices out there, but also the processes and the data. And then connect the different tools and map them to the different capabilities. So you have an understanding how these current capabilities are enabled by the current set of tools, but also, of course, how the tools are currently supporting the way of working and the data but also understanding the integrations, the integrations that are there today and that you potentially need. Like a service management system is integrated with the pipeline, monitoring tools, security, discovery, and the scene to be, and so on. And this provides you a good understanding of how the target capabilities are enabled by the current set of tools, processes, and data. And this gives you a good understanding of how and where you can improve specific areas. And of course, it's not about improving an individual capability, but rather improving the end-to-end -end value stream, like detect to correct. So what you can then do is start to do a maturity assessment or a high-level assessment of how well are the different capabilities enabling my DevOps journeys. Looking at the traceability, looking at the data, look at the integrations, and then understanding what are the areas which needs improvement but also important, what are the right set of sequence you need to provide this improvement? And linking it back, of course, to the value and the strategy and objectives of the overall organization. And then you can identify the different uh, initiatives or epics that you need to work on the coming period. And the challenge is that there are typically many different initiatives that you need to work on, like discovery, cloud management, uh, monitoring, license management, and so on. And then you have to create a, a roadmap because you need to understand the right sequence of activities you need to take to generate value and to ensure you have a common data model and a traceability designed in all these initiatives. And based on this high level roadmap, you can then uh, explain to the business what you're gonna do and integrate this into, uh, create this integrated digital management capability. Now, summarizing this presentation, we need to create an integrated digital management capability to enable the DevOps teams in their journey and managing this new digital ecosystem. We need to create a blueprint or architecture to show us the bigger picture of how everything should be connected. And that is where we can use the IT for IT standard as a reference model, defining the capabilities you need, the right set of tools, the right integrations and data flows. And this enables you to leverage the new superpower, which is transparency and traceability. If you are able to get transparency and traceability embedded in this new way of working, you become successful. You need this data-driven approach. And this needs to be part of the overall design and implementation of this new way of working. And a part of that foundation is also the service and product backbone, defining the products and the teams and how they generate value. This is how we play the IT transformation game today. We don't take the time to create a solid vision uh, nor creating a blueprint of our target operating model. Instead, we throw different tools and practices to it with many fragmented improvement initiatives to pimp our IT function. But we miss the overall plan how everything should be connected and fit together. And it's not that we're not doing our best. We often have the right ingredients, but we miss the recipe. So we need to understand the bigger picture and then select the right set of building blocks, practices and processes that fit seamlessly together, building this integrated digital management capability, a common IT for IT platform or tool chain that enables the DevOps teams to deliver much faster and more value. Thank you very much for listening and I wish you a good digital journey. If you want to know more, please visit the opengroup.org IT for IT website or please feel free to contact me directly. Thank you. Big virtual round of applause. Thank you, Rob. So, You're uh, welcome. Thank you, Steve.
We'll take a few questions. Um, how do you think the movement to self-service in the support model is benefiting the upskilling of workforce? Um, yeah, I think it, yeah, that, that's uh, significant because if you if you imagine, I, I I've worked for a lot of organisations, right, and um, I'm being onboarded on an organisation. Now, it typically takes a few weeks or maybe sometimes even longer to understand where do I need to go to consume what service. So, yeah. and if we are in a dynamic market like now, and the workforce is changing, I need maybe onboarded to a new application, new role. I need to know where to go and get my maybe it's access to a business service, access to data. And that's where self-service, self-help is so important that I can go to some, a portal, but, uh, speak of a portal for now, but that I can easily get whatever I need to do my work. Maybe it's access to an application, request that, or could be related to maybe just uh, for my developer, if I have a developer, maybe I need a source code repository, test environment, and so on. Today, you need to go to many different stop shops within the organization, many different portals. There's no way to, you need to ask your colleagues all the time, where do I find this? Where do I get access to this? Right. So Imagine you have a project to do in one month and you, you onboard people. Yeah. It takes one month to get people uh, fully on board. Thank you. So how does swarming differ from Agile and Scrum? Well, it, it, it is related, right? But this is about the way we organize our entire organization, where we uh, connect to the people that are needed to do the job at that point in time. So it is closely related to like, you have a product team responsible for the product, uh, but now we, we don't talk about just a product team. We talk about who can collaboratively work together in, it could be a new initiative or resolve issues. Uh, so the, but it's like more fundamentally give the, the teams the possibility to, to easily collaborate with different stakeholders in the organization. It, it's partially related to auto, autonomous teams as well, indeed, uh, and having the right um, yeah, collaborative mo movement between the teams. But you still need governance, right? That's, uh... Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to take, the, there are some more questions, and, uh, and if yeah. it's not too much of an imposition after what we've put you through already, if you could maybe <laughs> try to answer them in the chat, or we can we can sure. always help with how, because um, I'm just not going to get to them, and you, your presentation has inspired a lot of a lot of questions. So um, I'll, I'll end on this one. Um, could you please share your views on how technology portfolio management is changing with digital? It, is it gradually moving from being a cost center to becoming a profit or revenue center? And what does it take for digital portfolio portfolio owners to bring sponsors on board? Yeah, that's a good question. So managing our technology portfolio in the past was more like seen as a sort of back office activity, right? Understand what you have in, in but now it's maybe in the hand of the business themselves, right? They manage their portfolios. And so now I see that my managing my business portfolio in the sense of, call it, let's say, a business value stream that has a number of uh, services in there, and that technology portfolio is, is part of that, right? Managing the, so you see nowadays that if you organize around a value stream, maybe it's a kind of order to cash value stream, you see that the business owners managing that portfolio of services in that also manage, well, how much my technology portfolio sits in there? Uh, yeah. So there's a significant change how we, and call it, it, I'm not sure if you should call it a cost model or a ben, uh, like what kind of, it, that doesn't matter, right? It's part of the, um, and uh, yeah, your business model. Right. And, and of course, there are some services like maybe infrastructure services or end user computing services where you could say, are they, uh, that you don't sell them, right? It's more like enabling teams. Uh, so you still have this kind of mixed type of services you need to cater for. Right. Understood. There, there are some other questions there, specifics about how, how IT, I, uh, how IT for IT as a standard is evolving um, in the future, which I'm sure you'll want to get stuck into. Uh, I'd love to have the time to do that now. But uh, once again, Rob, a, a huge thank you from us, and um, and uh, I'll let you get on with questions and the rest of your day.